So hey everybody, it's Micah with Membarium, and today we get the pleasure of talking with Ruth and Bree from Elite Blog Academy, and they're going to share with us some of the success they've had with their membership site, and we're going to dive into what they did there, as well as what they're going to do and what they're planning on for their new membership site. So Bree and Ruth, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, and if you see Bree bouncing around, it's because she's <laughs> in a trailer we found, and so this is extra fun. She's on the road. We haven't done one of these before. Sorry, guys. Um, Bree is the embodiment of the work from anywhere lifestyle. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so I'm just going to kind of start out here asking for a little bit of you know business history. So tell us a little bit about your business, how you got started, and where you are today. Okay. Well, um, our business actually is not Elite Blog Academy. Um, our main business and our company's name is Living Well Spending Less Inc., which is based off of my original blog, um, Living Well Spending Less. And Elite Blog Academy sort of got born out of that. Um, I don't normally blog about blogging on my main blog, Living Well Spending Less, but I had so many friends and bloggers asking me what I was doing on Living Well Spending Less to make it successful that I first wrote a book and um, that ended up becoming a bestseller on Amazon and just had a lot more people asking a lot more questions and I realized um, that the questions they were asking were a lot of the same questions and the question, the main question that I was getting over and over again was just tell me step by step what I have to do to be successful. And that was, that was where Elite Blog Academy came from, was just a step-by-step -step plan for what you need to do to build a successful, profitable blog. Okay, so, and I apologize, let's back up a little bit then. Tell yeah. me about um, the other side of the business that this mm -hmm. came from. Yep, um, Living Well, Spending Less, my main blog. Um, I've been blogging since 2010. I started it not because I was a money saving expert, but just the opposite. I was a money spending expert and my husband and I were fighting a lot about money. And so I needed something to do to hold myself accountable and that wasn't going to target. And so I started blogging and I realized just really early on, like within probably the first four weeks of blogging that I was something that I loved, that I had passion for, and that I could make a business out of it. And so I told my husband, I'm like, honey, I am going to make enough money blogging so that you can quit your job. And he, my husband is an aerospace engineer. So that was not a small, <laughs> small goal. And uh, he looked at me and he was like, honey, that is the stupidest thing that you have ever said. You can't make money at a blog. And I, so then I was determined to prove him wrong. And yes, he has since apologized. And he has also since quit his job. And he is now the stay at home dad. And I do living well, spending less full time. We have a million and a half visitors a month. Um, I've written five books in five years, <laughs> one of which made the New York Times bestseller list this year, um, or last year, I guess. And so it's just been, it's been crazy. We, this In 2015, we launched um, our first product called the Living Well Planner. So we've got lots of stuff going on. Um, Elite Blog Academy is kind of just the side project where we just get it, we get to share all the stuff that we're learning and all the lessons that we're learning over on a real blog that's targeted to real people, which I think is one of the things that really sets um, Elite Blog Academy apart from a lot of the information about blogging and marketing that's out there is because so much of it, not that it's bad information because it's great information and there's so much great information out there, but a lot of it is marketers marketing to marketers about marketing to teach other marketers how to be better marketers so that they can market to marketers too. And there's almost like this whole like circular thing going on. And so I think that's why I love Elite Blog Academy so much is because I can take everything I'm learning from my audience of frugal moms. I mean, talk about the worst, like marketing audience in the whole world. And I can say, this is how, um, we're making, we're successful with this. If I can make, basically, if I can make money with this audience, then you can make money with any, with any audience. So, um, and that's, I share those lessons. That's awesome. So it sounds, first of all, like your husband is smarter than he sounds because he probably like, <laughs> Yeah, you know, knew what buttons to push, right? Yeah, um, yeah. Well, and he has since he has since apologized profusely, <laughs> and <laughs> he loves every minute of being a stay-at-home dad. So he's a great dad. 
That's awesome. And then, yeah, I love the fact that you're doing this from a perspective of not just marketing. It's uh, like digital marketer. I really like and respect those guys. And I think the reason their stuff is good is because they're running actual businesses and then right. here's the lessons learned instead of like, what can we come up with? This sounds awesome. Exactly. Right. exactly. Yeah. Very cool. So um, focusing in on Elite Blog Academy, one of the things um, that, that I heard about it that I thought was really cool is you made great use of affiliates for that, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, huge use of affiliates. So I want to dive into that, but let me ask just real quick, how long have you used Infusionsoft? Since 2014. We started using Infusionsoft about two months before we launched Elite Blog Academy. No, a month before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So it was a quick learning, learning curve. Yeah. So did you both learn it or? We, well, Breeze learned it better than I have, but... Mm -hmm. You know, I have my moments. Bree is more the tech, the technical person in this little partnership. I, I create the content. She, uh, she makes it work and she makes it pretty. <laughs> cool. Okay. And then had you done, so I guess on the other side you were blogging, um, but had you done any sort of membership site before the blog Academy on that side? Um, we no. We had done a membership site almost at the same exact time as, as Elite Blog Academy. I think like a month earlier we opened it um, for the Living Well Spending Less audience. And it was a very ill-conceived concept. And it was a complete failure in every way. Like it's the biggest business turd I've ever had. <laughs> it was really bad. <laughs> okay. So how on, on the other side of the business, how do you make your money? Is it through advertisers or... Um, it, well, you know, starting out, um, I did a lot of ad networks, um, like ad network revenue and I still have ads on my site. Um, although not on the homepage anymore. And that was pretty good source of income, um, for, a, for a long time and affiliate, um, affiliate advertising and affiliate links throughout the site. So that's always a source of income. But more and more, um, the longer I do it, the more it has transferred over to um, product sales. And so selling my own products. The so books um, were my first products. And then um, again, in 2015, we launched our Living Well Planner. So now, whereas, you know, ad network revenue used to account for like 90% of my revenue, now it only accounts for 10% of my revenue. And uh, product sales are about 80%. Okay, so info products, but not necessarily memberships. Is that right? Um, not necessarily membership sites. No, we do not have a membership site for that for that uh, audience right now. Yeah. Um, if we, it's not something that I have ruled out. I would definitely like to do something for that audience. It just what we did and the way that we did it was was totally the wrong wrong fit, wrong approach. No launch plan. That was in the early, in the early days. So we would do it a lot better if we were going to do it again. <laughs> okay. Okay, cool. So um, tell me, and Bree, since you kind of made the site, did you make both sites? First of all, both membership sites? No. Um, the first site wasn't, I mean, it was, like she said, an ill-conceived concept. It was kind of last minute trying to eliminate another problem that we had. So it wasn't even very functional in terms of the membership component. But no, I didn't. I actually, that's when I got brought in um, was kind of, there was some confusion happening with the people that were previously running the, you know, membership site and the Infusionsoft. And I uh, kind of fell into place there. So I got brought in for the revamp of everything and uh, trying to figure out the systems and the best processes. Previously, we were using Customer Hub. And so my, my you know, goal was to find the best solution. And that's where I went to researching. And we, you know, it, we reviewed Customer Hub, we reviewed Wishlist Member and a few others. And then I came across Memberium and jumped on a call with you guys and was super impressed. We were really wanting the functionality of, um, like Ruth said, we are real specific to our brand and making things pretty and like we want the experience to be just like over the top and easy um, for our audience and we couldn't find a membership platform out there that really 
we were able to tweak to what we needed and Membarium had that feature where we could pretty much give it our look, our feel. There was no template. We could make everything the way that we wanted. Um, so that, that was the route we took. Okay, gotcha. So um, what was maybe your biggest challenge in building the Elite Blog Academy site? Uh, for us, the biggest challenge, well, like I said, it, it was transitioning. So we were going from Customer Hub over to Membarium. We already had all of our Infusionsoft stuff in place. And anybody that's ever worked in Infusionsoft knows that, like, one wrong move is, like, detrimental. <laughs> so we were terrified to, like, really switch anything. Um, and so that was my biggest stress was how do we – we already had the site live. We already had members that were currently in the site taking the curriculum. And it was – the struggle was how do we move this over to Membarium and actually revamp the site without causing this huge, you know, problem and people losing their passwords or new logins. Um, and so I worked with the Membarium support staff, and it was, like – the easiest transition ever. They totally walked us through step by step. All of our um, current members kept their existing usernames and passwords, um, and they actually, using Membrane, improved that because previously we just had the membership site and a um, community forum. Well, we also added a app that we developed, so and we added the affiliate portal. So now the way that it operated with customer hub was there were like three different logins. And so we had this huge outpour of people like, Oh, what's my affiliate login? What's my community forum login? What's my EBA login? And it was just like a total support nightmare. So Membarium actually was able to give us the levels of membership where we could control and their username and password was the same across the board. Um, mm -hmm. And they had the option of clicking that wonderful little button that says, keep me logged in. Um, on the app, which made things super easy. <laughs> and I mean, Elite, Elite Blog Academy, just from a content standpoint, has so much content. There is, I mean, there's 12 units and each unit is just like jam packed with PDFs and videos and, and there's so much stuff because we, we want it, we want it to be a great course. I mean, that's our ultimate goal is to have this amazing course that really changes lives. And so making sure that the user experience is as good as possible and, and not overwhelming, even though there's so much content there, is really, really important for us as well. And Membarium has been great for that. Cool. So you put everything together and then created this user experience. And as I understand it, you're, you built the user experience custom, like you're not using LearnDash or anything. Is that right? Correct. Yeah, we, we had it all <laughs> custom coded. <laughs> we like cool. custom. Yeah. <laughs> um, Bree, if we can have you share your screen and then we'll stop sharing these webcams and have you pull up your screen and maybe you can give us a walkthrough yeah. of yeah, what a member sees and then we'll go on the back end and see how you did some of that. Sure. Let me get everything here. Okay. Oh, did it not? I don't know if it's sharing my sound. Let me just double check. Uh, yeah, so we can okay. hear you and then Perfect. we see the screen. Perfect. All right, so here is, actually, if we want to go here, this is, um, like we said, we actually are improving the site once again <laughs> because we have added content, um, which is also free to all of our existing members. Ruth tends to um, update the content a lot as we learn things, and so that's one of the great benefits is that once you are a member, you get um, everything that is added, upgraded for life. So when that was our quick login page and because it has me auto logged in, this would be the first page that a member would see once they log in. And this will be our video slideshow with Ruth. And then down here we have all of our downloads um, and quick navigation to the areas. Um, and then this is actually something new that we are adding um, which is a upsell to our existing membership. So anybody that has, you know, completed the Elite Blog Academy 2.0 will now have the option to purchase the VIP module, which um, is, takes it a step further. And the great part about this is if I don't have this membership level tag with my Membarium and I click on this button, it's going to take me to a sales page. 
However, if I do have the um, VIP level membership tied to my account, I will be able to access it from here. So that's another cool feature that we use Membarium for. And then you'll see with the navigation here, um, it will just take you on to the next unit. Um, and again, it'll have all the units that are within this module here. And anything that's related to this actual unit, you'll be able to download here. Um, everything's pretty quick and easy to navigate to. And so that just walks you through. Um, here will be our videos, and when you click on these, they will pop up and play. So you can kind of... Cool. Is, is that uh, Vimeo for the videos? We do use Vimeo, yep, and we have them embedded, and I believe um, there's a plugin that we are using for that as well, and it is, let me look, I think. We'll have to look at it on the plugin dashboard, but it's, it's uh, something that we use to make the pop-up happen. Um, and then up here is our quick navigation also, so you can go to each of the units up here as well. Um, this will take you to our bonus material, everything, um, is hosted actually on here in a media library. So, little side note, we previously hosted it as a direct download on Dropbox, and we have realized that as we add and change and update, that that makes it super complicated. Um, links are broken often, so this was a learning experience <laughs> for us. And then we also have, um, Ruth does some bonus videos, and so that would be here. And then in this area up here, you will see we have our live Q&As. So part of the course is um, Ruth and I schedule live Q&As um, and she'll do it topic specific to stuff that's happening in the course. Um, and then we will publish them here and then we have a library of all the past ones and then, so you can see how those work. And then here's the archives and these will have all of our past videos as well as anything that gets added new. And then here we go. We also have, this is a pretty awesome feature we're excited about. <laughs> we had previously done a class roster um, kind of just with a Google Doc and some forms and Infusionsoft and it worked, but it wasn't searchable. Um, so this in the future you'll be able to search um, and then it has all of our current members so that if you are looking to, you know, get in touch with anybody that's in the course or, you know, reach out and try to make something happen within your blogging community, you can do it all there. And then here we have our frequently asked questions, which we have a full staff of support people who um, are there to answer questions. But from having done this the first two times we've kept this running list of any questions any problems that people you know run into and so we've tried to eliminate the aspect of having to constantly be answering questions um, as the membership grows it gets more challenging to be answering all those questions so we tend to direct them here first where they you know should be able to get that we have screenshots of how to solve the problem and then at that point if they can't resolve it we obviously have somebody that's there to walk them through um and then let me see so so. let me ask you a quick question about this um because sure. the design is so clean did you use a theme for this or is it like bootstrap or no it's actually it was done on a, a genesis theme but it has been custom customized for us Oh, it's nice. It's so, um, I, a lot of people will try to cram in too much and like too much design. And I just like how some people might call it plain, but I'd call it very clean and easy. There's nothing Definitely getting like, yeah, super like easy, uh, simple. There's so much content here. I mean, you can see each there's four modules and each module has several units, um, that, I mean, if we did anything crazy, it would, it would just be so overwhelming. So our goal, the whole goal of the course is to eliminate overwhelm for people and to just give them a, a plan and a framework to, so that they can be successful. And so it's, and it's really this new, um, this new version, which the 2.0, which has not, we haven't officially launched yet. So you're getting the behind the scenes look at it, but it's just designed so that people can 
every, every button will lead you to the next step so that you never don't know where to go. So once you start with the beginning, then it'll show you where to go next. Yeah. yeah, this is great. And help me understand a little bit deeper the customer. So these are bloggers in general trying to monetize their blog similar to what you do? Bloggers. Yep, absolutely. So we have bloggers who range from bloggers who are already making a full-time income on their blog who want to take it to the next level. Um, we have bloggers who are just starting out or who have just started their blog and haven't even, you know, don't have a single reader yet. So, you know, we don't teach the technical side of like, here's how you set up a blog. Here's how you, you know, you find, buy your domain name. And we don't do any of that. We, we, we start from the assumption that you have a blog that has been set up at some point. And then we just go from there. We talk about first, and the, the cool thing about EVA is that the framework that we provide, it doesn't matter where you're at in your blogging journey, whether you've been doing it for a long time or not, or just starting out, um, it will give you, you'll get different things out of it um, all the way through, but it's all applicable. So the four modules are refining your message, growing your audience, uh, monetizing your platform and building your business. And we have had several people who have gone through the course more than once now that we've offered it several times. And, you know, you get a lifetime membership and even I've gone, I mean, I wrote the course and I, I went through it last spring and went through the whole course and applied all the lessons that I had previously taught and applied them again to my blog. And I got so much out of it. So I even um, video blogged throughout that process and then shared videos on the course for people, which I think was a really, it was just a really popular feature because, you know, you, I think you, it's, it, it just goes to show that it's the lessons are totally applicable no matter where you're at in your blogging journey. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Start with good content. Um, tell me this and I could make some guesses, but are your users, um, you know, male, female, and also technical, non-technical, where do they fall in, in your mind? <laughs> um, I would say probably 90, 90% female. Wouldn't you say Brie? We do have a few yeah, guys. We have gotten, yeah, I would say the, the <laughs> last couple ones we've, we've gotten more men actually, and even food network stars, um, were some of the male population that have their blog and are trying to, you know, grow their audience for their upcoming cookbooks. So, yeah, we do have a, a lot, large, large female audience, but w recently we've been getting a lot more males. I think blogging in general is, is, has become much more female dominated than, than male. But, um, yeah, so I would say probably, probably about 90%. Yeah. Okay. And I think it really ranges on, I would say a large portion of our membership is not technical. Um, but we do, and that's part of the bonuses and a lot of the like pre stuff before you get the courses, you know, those aspects. And plus we give all the resources that we use. So, you know, Ruth freely admits that she's not technical, um, but she also <laughs> is happy time. to provide you with all of the resources that we use, you know, and oddly enough, I was not a technical person. <laughs> um, and so the things that are happening with the right support staff, like, when I went to the Membarium site to do my research, I was like, there's absolutely no way I could ever possibly figure this out. But getting on the, the you know, a call and getting with your support staff, it, I like now fully understand it. And I am not like a web developer by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> um, so that's the great thing is all of the stuff that is talked about that is technical, Ruth always gives exactly the resources that we personally use and also resources that we've used and we've decided, oh, they didn't work and this is why and we've moved on to this. So she's really transparent in the course and I think that's what people really love is that it's not just a course like telling you how to do it. It's like, oh, hey, this is how we do it and this is why we do it and here's the fails and what led us to this point. <laughs> And we show them, you know, very transparent. We're not afraid to say, look, we tried it and it didn't work. Um, and hopefully, you know, help people avoid the same pitfalls that we've experienced. Right. Gotcha. Cool. And one other lesson I think we can draw from something you said, Ruth, was just the names of the modules. Um, Brie, can you show us, is there like a homepage with the four main yeah. module names? Here we go. So we've got right here are the modules. So we've got the refine your message grow your traffic, monetize your platform, build your business, and then coming soon is the VIP. So one of the things I like about this is 
just that every single one is, you know, specific, like do something, but also the word your is in all of them. A lot of membership site owners, you know, they understand from their perspective, but I love this where you're coming from, you know, sharing your experience, but putting it in terms of the user and what they're going to, not just that it's your, but it's also aspirational, like stuff they want to do and um, destination driven. It's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, like so, can you, um, Brie, can you go into the back end and show sure. us a couple of the plugins? So you mentioned, you know, you were using yeah. a Genesis theme. You've got Vimeo with some sort of. Um, yeah, I can't remember. Very many plugins, but we'll see the. So here we go. Um, the plugin that we, we haven't updated it that we were using is, I believe it is this, the player six plugin. Um, and we may have eliminated that because we wanted some different functionality, but you can see realistically, like compared to Ruth's blog, <laughs> we have very few plugins to make everything work, which is kind of nice. Um, and that's the one thing is with this membership site, like even before we did the revamp and it was still running, the, the look was just a little bit different. Um, we haven't run into any issues. There hasn't been an issue of like, oh, this wasn't working or this crashed or, oh, this, you know, link is broken. Everything so far has just worked. The videos work, um, the actual like membership levels work. It's so we have several different membership levels um, currently where either you're an EBA member or you're an affiliate or you have both. Um, again, the Memberium, you know, lets those who have both use one username and password. Um, and then those, for instance, that are affiliates but don't actually have course access, don't have access to the course. So um, on the back side, which I can show you, there is, if you have um, an affiliate tag applied to you in membership level, then on the back side, you can go to our affiliate center and it will take you directly there. If not, again, it takes you to an outside page where it will ask you to, to register to be an affiliate. Um, so that's kind of nice. And same thing with the, the forum. So with our forum, you have to be approved. We don't, so we go in and we double check and make sure that you actually are a paying member of Elite Blog Academy. And then we approve you at that point. The membership is actually applied to you and grants you access to that community forum as well. Cool. So a couple questions. Um, I see Thrive Themes on there. I'm guessing that's what you're using on this one. Which Thrive Theme is it? To be honest, I have no idea because uh, our good old friend George set this one up. Oh, cool. And, and she's talking about uh, George Diaz, actually. Um, he's on our implementa implementation partners page under the company Larry Jacob. So, okay, cool. So let's walk through what it's like for an affiliate because um, for everybody watching, this is, you know, it's a beautiful site. It's elegant and simple. And, you know, knowing the target market, I'm sure they go in and are able to get around. But I thought it was really interesting how you guys use this to manage your affiliates and give them their resources. So can you show us some of that? Sure. So um, I'm logged in and obviously I am an admin and also a member and also an affiliate. So when I go to this drop down in the affiliate with the correct membership tag, I am able to go in. Um, and here again, we are in the process of kind of revamping things right now. But um, right here would be for the simplified and you click here to take you to your links um, again all of which is managed by Infusionsoft and Membarium. And then, sorry, go back. And so we have our banners and our images. Um, and then this makes it super simple. They'll, you know, carbon copy and put this in, which also includes their affiliate tracking and everything is tracked um, straight through to Infusionsoft so that when a sale is made, everything is tracked in terms of um, clawbacks if somebody were to refund it or the, the payment didn't process um, all of that is tracked and then we actually know you know um, Ruth is really awesome at our affiliate promotion and keeping when we do a launch we you know really motivate people and we keep a tab of here's the top 10 and Infusionsoft and this makes it super easy to go in and say okay here's you know these these are the top 10 and these people sold 20 today and we can run all sorts of promotions and contests to um, keep everyone motivated. 
And so we've got, again, our FAQs and then back here. So this, um, down here we actually have video training that will show you um, our pre-sales sequence. Uh, and this is for like the more advanced affiliates So you'll go into here and you'll get your social media quotes and things. Sorry, we got slow connection. Mm -hmm. Yes, we got nothing. Um, but you can see from there, this is actually in right now being updated, so <laughs> that might be why it's so slow. Um, but again, you know, we provide the sales copy. Here's for blog post. Here's, you know, another blog post. Um, so we try to make it as easy as possible. We provide all the images, um, just anything that we can do to make it uh, easy for our affiliates to promote. And then anytime there's any news or information, whether we have, you know, we might be having a contest or we're offering a, you know, early bird bonus or something, we will put that in here and also send emails uh, through Infusionsoft to let people know. And then we provide emails, uh, sales emails. And then let's see if our stats and commission. So stats and commission are handled within Infusionsoft. And so this actually takes us, yeah, so it's in the process of being um, updated. But right now what this does is there will be a button here and the Mimbarium plugin allows us to push this button and I automatically am logged into the Infusionsoft stats and commission side where I can see all the sales that I've done, how many people have opted in, you know, via my affiliate link and then um, what sales have been made during the launch on my part or anybody that's returned, I'll see all the clawbacks. Um, so it's a pretty incredible tool that we use. So a couple questions for you. Um, sure. Are the affiliates the same people as your end users or is it a different audience for affiliates? Uh, I would say it's both. Because <laughs> we have members and we have people that aren't members. So Ruth could really yeah, answer that. For the most part, most of our affiliates are EBA members. So once you've taken the EBA course, you have the option of applying to be an affiliate, um, which is great. And not all of our members want to. I mean, a lot of them don't blog about blogging to their blog, so it wouldn't really be a good fit. But many of them do. And many of them have had such a good experience with Elite Blog Academy that they just want to share it with their friends and even if they don't normally blog about that. And that's actually been incredibly powerful when people can share their own experience and how it's made a difference in the course. I mean, we have some, some of our top affiliates, their blogs have nothing to do with blogging. And yet their, their personal stories of how, how Elite Blog Academy has worked for them is so powerful that they end up getting lots of sales. So, um, but then we also have, you know, influencers and JV partners who um, are interested in promoting the course because it is a good fit for their audience, but not necessarily because they want to take the course. And so those ones we, um, we accept just on a case by case basis. It's not, we don't have an open and like an open application process for Elite Blog Academy. It's either somebody that we've invited or spoke to personally um, that's an actual influencer or else somebody who's actually taken the course. Gotcha. Yeah, there's a couple of things there. So first of all, in looking at the way you laid out the affiliate program and the way you kind of designed it and provided additional resources, um, my guess, you know, because I know you guys were really successful at this. Um, if you want to share some numbers in that, that's great. Um, but just the way that you've made it easy to use, not just in, hey, here's your resources in human terms instead of like internet marketer terms, because a lot of people will say, um, things that only an internet marketer would understand, you know, um, mm -hmm. like the technical side of the affiliate program, which is how Infusionsoft, if you've been in the Infusionsoft back office, it's very much like that. So the fact that you're making them easy to use, easy to understand is great. Um, and then one of the things you touched on about having your users share their story along with the promotion, um, I think is awesome. Can you go a little bit more into that? Yeah, our affiliate center is really geared towards towards our, mem our EBA members. We assume that if we're asking somebody who's a, a, a major influencer who does lots of affiliate programs that we don't need to tell them that much. Like they're going to figure out how to promote and they need the links, but that's, and maybe some images, but that's about it. So all the web copy and everything that we provide, and we provide like a whole email campaign um, that people can use all of that stuff. The copy that's written is 
is intended to be shared by people who have taken the course. So it's, you know, with, there's spots where it says, insert your story here. And so it gives them kind of the basic outline, but then they can, yeah, insert a paragraph sharing your own struggles. So they can really customize it. So it doesn't feel like, you know, 50 people are writing the same blog post because it's all customized to each person's individual story. But at least that's giving our members who maybe aren't, you know, aren't necessarily used to promoting a, something like this, a product like this, and don't quite know how to bring it to their audience. This gives them a way to do it in a really authentic way. Very cool. Yeah, it's, um, no, I know from my experience too, that can be much more powerful. You give somebody some copy that they just copy and paste and use, you get a much bigger impact if they customize it to how they know you or you know their experience with the product. So that's awesome. Exactly. Um, a couple of questions for you on the sales side. Yeah. So what, what has been your most successful sales strategy for getting members? You know, we have done, we've done four um, car open sequences so far. Two have been major launches and two have been just quick flash sales that we didn't, you know, just did a real quick promotion. Um, and so for our major launches, uh, we've, both times we did a sequence, um, like a mini course that we called it, which was a sequence of three videos that were like mini training videos that took some content from the course and kind of put it into a little presentation that people could watch and um, just kind of get a taste of, of me and what I'm teaching and the kind of stuff that I'm teaching. And that went along with an email sequence and it all went out in Fusionsoft. And we had a pretty small list um, <laughs> because yeah. blogging is not my blogging is not my main audience and bloggers are not my main audience. Um, the only real list that we started out with was um, from writing writing my book How to Blog for Profit. In there, I had offered a free blog planner if you um, you know came in and signed up with your email address. So I think we had about two thousand bloggers on that list for our first launch. And we just started, started to grow it. And so, um, it was amazing. The, uh, the, and I think the first time around I, I did share about the course in a lot of blogger Facebook groups that I was in. I think that was kind of the way that I got the word out. Like, Hey, I'm doing this course. If you want to check it out, there's this free training thing. And, and, um, it was pretty, it was pretty low key. Um, but we've sort of ramped it up every time since then. Um, so a couple of questions for you. You mentioned the yeah. phrase cart open. Does that mean that there was a cart close and you, yes. okay. Yep. So um, the doors are not open all the time for elite blog Academy. You can only join, um, twice a year. So it's we, because elite blog Academy is not our main business and we're, <laughs> we're running a big blog the rest of the year. We, there's just no way that we can do it all the time. So we sort of have to fit it into our schedule um, with, with elite or with living while spending less and figure out how, when we can do it so that we can give our, the bloggers everything that they need in those first few weeks of the course and also still, you know, effectively run our blog, which is our day job. <laughs> so, um, we only open it usually once in the spring and once in the fall. And, um, and the fall is usually just a quick two day thing. Whereas the spring is more of our big full launch. So the, the doors will be open for five days, um, starting this year, I think February 22nd and we'll run, um, a pre-launch campaign, um, the week before that starting on February 16th. Okay. Gotcha. So what, what is the offer typically? Like, what are you, you know, what are they paying per month or is there a trial or how do you do it? It's a one-time fee, um, and it's four ninety-nine um, for for membership. And then the VIP level, we haven't come up with pricing on that. Um, but yeah, it's a one-time fee, and it includes lifetime access. So okay. it's pretty that's actually a pretty good deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's really is. good deal. And you get an app, <laughs> all kinds of free bonuses, live webinars, and an app. It's a great deal. And I, app, and there's a weekly newsletter that goes out that actually is probably one of the, a lot of people say that's their favorite part because that's where I just share stuff that's going on in my own business and say, Hey, I learned about this this week and you might be interested to know this. So, um, it's, it's always, you know, up to date content and the latest and the greatest of, of what I'm doing in my own business too. 
Cool. So you've got the weekly newsletter going out. Um, what other kind of emails? So do you have like a membership campaign or is it more the weekly newsletter? There is the membership. There's an onboard campaign that happens once somebody has um, purchased the course, they get a series of, uh, well, their first email, which is just their welcome and their login information. And then they get a series of 12 emails after that. Each one corresponds to one of the units in the course. Plus the weekly newsletter and then, Plus the weekly um, newsletter. yeah, and we do a lot of email broadcasts. So, you know, if something we learn about something, you know, incredible and say it's a lead page offer, or just in general, any tool that has helped make things easier. We've used, you know, Ruth is really, really good about sending out a broadcast email to share that. Or if we have a member, we, we work a lot with our current members that, you know, have seen great success because of Elite Blog Academy and have published their own books or have their own courses. And so we help to promote those as well. That's the really cool thing about having this kind of a community is, is when you're, you know, helping people to succeed and then you see them be successful and you can share that and it's motivating to the rest of the people who are in the course. But it's also, you know, it's like, it's so cool. It's because that you, it's, and it's humbling too, because you see how, how like just sharing a little bit of what you of your own stuff can impact so many lives yeah yeah that's so you mentioned community and you talked about how you have a forum do you have a facebook group too or do you put it all through the forum (laughs) (laughs) we um for the first go around we did a facebook group And, um, we found that, um, if Facebook is just so hard, I know people love it because it's easy, but the problem is that you're, you know, if it's a really active group, your whole newsfeed is flooded and it's this constant distraction. And then you can never find the stuff, you know, that, that people are asking for, like asked if they asked a question about something, you can never find it again. So people keep asking the same questions over and over again. And, um, so what we decided to do was switch over to a forum and, um, that has been, that's been interesting. So the people that were in the Facebook group from the original, anybody who's, who was not in the original Facebook group loves the forum. (laughs) Anybody who was in the original forum, Facebook group hates the forum is pretty much what it comes down to. People who are in a Facebook group do not want to switch out of it. So... Um, but that's, so we left the Facebook group for that group open and they, they can still chat with each other, but we do not interact in that Facebook group. So if people have questions, they can ask their questions right, um, in the forum. And one, one of the reasons too, with the Facebook group was, um, because it was such easy access, people would tend to ask questions to Ruth and myself in there and not email us. And then when we didn't answer them because we don't see them all the time, um, they would get angry. So it was kind of a thing where it was, had to be done in order to prevent things from falling through the cracks because we wanted to make sure that we were getting answers out to everyone. But just by tagging us in a post, you know, you can only imagine how many posts Ruth is tagged in on a daily basis that didn't necessarily constitute an answer to the question. And so um, we felt this was the best way to actually have things and have Ruth's response so that everyone could see it. Um, Now it's in the forum and it's been there and people can reference back to it. And for our FAQ pages and things moving forward, we can reference to the forum and everything's in there and you can search. And um, from a business standpoint and like an actual member standpoint who is needing, you know, answers to questions for the, you know, throughout the duration of the course, you can go in and for instance here, like, see questions that have been asked that you might have had and they've already been answered. You're not waiting for anything. And the best part about this is like, as the people have have advanced and want to share, the members are helping each other at a far quicker rate than Ruth and I can help, you know, because there's only two of us. And like she said, we have a full-time business on, you know, as well. And it's, it's completely categorized and there's even a section that we call, I think tribes or something like that. And where you can um, connect with people who are in your own genre and your own niche. So that's been really nice as well. And um, you know, it's, it just gives people an opportunity to, to find stuff easily. And I'm not, you know, as a 
on a personal note, I'm just not a big fan of Facebook groups. I think they're a huge time suck. And I think that if you're busy chatting in a Facebook group, then you're not busy doing the work that needs to be done and you're not going to be successful. So <laughs> I didn't really want to encourage people to be chatting in the EBA Facebook group when I think that those are ultimately counterproductive. Yeah, this is always to me an interesting point and something we get asked all the time is should we do a forum or a Facebook group? And um, so for you guys where you have a larger client base and they're active and I'm guessing since they're bloggers, they, they like to write a bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Some do. Cool. Yeah. Cause you, you get to pull all the content into a forum and I see where that makes sense. And it's funny that you went from Facebook to here because what the story we hear a lot is people going from their own forum and their user base, pretty much abandoning it and going into a Facebook group. Um, and I know, yeah. I mean, I personally hate Facebook. I hate it with a passion. So you're preaching to the choir and not wanting to be in there wasting your yeah. time. Um, but yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so I guess for anybody who's listening to this, just understanding a couple of those differences where they have enough users who like to write and they can get a lively conversation. This is fantastic. Yeah. You know, if you've got a small group, you might want to start it on Facebook because getting some forms well. are a ghost town. I don't know. I would not start on Facebook. That would be my recommendation because once you're on there, like people do not want to move over. And so if you're going to, if you want to have a forum, you can always switch to Facebook later if it doesn't work, but try, I would start with the forum. Now, the one thing that we did is you can see here is we, the biggest complaint that we had about the forum was that it wasn't mobile friendly. And so we actually went above and beyond and developed our own EBA app that people could download and you can, then you can have access to the forum right from your phone, from the app. And it's really easy to use. So, and it's very mobile friendly and that part, you know, everybody always tells you when they complain, they don't really tell you, thank you once you do something to That's alleviate right. the problem. So, but it has, it definitely, we don't get complaints about it not being mobile friendly anymore. That's for sure. So I guess, awesome. I guess we have solved the problem. So, so let me ask you this. So you recommend, yes. um, probably a forum first and see how that goes. What other advice would you give to somebody starting a membership site? And let's start in a couple areas. So what advice on sales would you give to somebody starting a membership site first? That's a great question. Um, well, I would say that you cannot um, plan your launch strategy um, early enough. So even when you're creating the content, for the course, think about your launch strategy. And it's really important to have a very clear vision of what the benefit is and you know what the felt need is of your audience and what the benefit is that they're gonna receive and what the transformation is that they're gonna receive because that's all the stuff that you're gonna need to figure out how to sell it when you start thinking about your launch plan. And if you don't know, if you can't answer those questions really, really super clearly, like have an avatar of, who is my audience and what keeps them up at night and what is the purpose of this and what are they going to gain from it? You need to know that so, so clearly so far in advance because that way you can make sure that the content you're providing is actually doing what you're going to say it's going to do. And then you need to really take the time. Um, the, the one membership site that we talked about that was a complete flop. There was no plan. And that was actually a, a, a instance where we had a, this Facebook group that was, this is why I hate Facebook groups so much. Um, we had a Facebook group from the Living Wall Spending Less community that had grown to like 40,000 people. And it was like crazy, out of control, um, was costing me just thousands of dollars to pay moderators for and, and earning zero income. And so um, we, something had to be done. And um, so we decided, oh, well, why don't we just switch everybody to a membership? I'm sure they'll be willing to pay, you know, like $10 a year to be part of this group. Oh, no, <laughs> they were not. <laughs> and people just completely revolted. But we had no, there was really no plan. And there was no, like, real, well, it was not a well thought out um, thought out idea. It was just figuring that people would understand our dilemma and go for it. And they did not at all. So, um, that was a huge lesson. And what I, but for every other launch that we've ever done for every other product that we've ever done, we've really taken the time to create a strong launch strategy with email se sequence and figuring out how are we going to explain, you know, how are we going to 
sell the transformation because ultimately that's what you're selling. You're not selling a product, you're selling a transformation. And, um, and it's been extremely successful, whether it's books or a membership site or the planner that we, we just sold, we're selling the promise of a tra transformation and hopefully delivering that promise when, with our products. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's great. So <laughs> there, you, in a way, answered my next question, but I'll, I'll just ask and see if there's anything else. So that's perfect about, you know, thinking about the sales part. What advice would you give to someone when they are designing and building the course on top of that? Um, I would say just think about your audience and and what you know kind of anticipate their needs if you that's and that's where it comes down to really understanding your avatar and who your audience is because if you understand what their problems are and what they're looking to achieve it's really easy to create what they need and then figuring out a way to put it in your site in a way that's easy to access and easy to understand. I would recommend having people test the site before you make it live to like just people who don't really understand websites, especially like don't, don't have your tech guy test it because he'll think it's fine. Have your mom test it. Who's never been on the internet before. And if you can have like people who don't understand websites, come and come and figure it out and not have problems with it. They're the best testers that you can possibly have. And so um, that's, you want to always create what your products from the user experience and don't think about what you want. Think about what your user needs. And um, that's really the best thing that you can do. And less complicated, like less is <laughs> always more. We have discovered whether yeah. it's, Oh, we're going to deliver, you know, an email and unlock a unit. No. Like it never no. works that way. <laughs> it just no. doesn't. And as much as we want to yeah. believe it does, somebody signed up for the course with their husband's PayPal. And so there's so many aspects of it that you think you're trying to improve the user experience when in fact you're complicating the process. So we've found mm -hmm. less is always more. <laughs> Yes. And also like, don't worry about having everything perfect before you launch it. I mean, you have a clear idea, know what your, your purpose is and stuff, but give yourself wiggle room to like add new content and improve stuff and answer questions because stuff will always come up. And, and that's when you can like blow your audience away when you're like, Hey, and now I have this bonus for you. And Oh, now I have another bonus for you because then you're just giving them more and more value and which they will absolutely love. But it doesn't all have to be perfect. I mean, Elite Blog Academy was a great course when I launched it in 2014. It's an amazing course now because I've had the benefit of having four, four classes go through it and, and I add stuff every single time. Yeah, and I would say too, that was one of the, the great things when we started. I've always thought that the, the course was underpriced from the get-go and you'll see compared to like, I'm still arguing that point. So <laughs> sign on for $4.99 because I'm going to win one of these days. <laughs> but, um, $4.99? It's $4.99. I know you said sign on because I'm going to win one of these days and it's not <laughs> Oh yeah, Brie wants to raise the price even more. So yeah, if so. you're watching this and you're thinking about taking it, really, you should buy it now. <laughs> One day I'm going to win. But uh, we, when we first launched, it was way less than $4.99. And that was the benefit was the first launch. We kind of knew that going in and it was more like a beta test group. And that's why they got the Facebook. And so those learning curves, you know, they, they kind of anticipated that they might experience those because we let them know, look, it's the first time. And, and now those people too are getting the benefits of you know, when we do something new, whether it's an app or whether it's the VIP, um, we invite them to test it for us. So cultivating that relationship with that first group um, at a lower price point to really get feedback is huge, huge value. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. I was talking to another client recently, um, and I think you guys have this going for you in a big way. And he did it intentionally where basically the first, you know, I think it was 200 members he was letting it in, letting them in for almost nothing at a lifetime level, even though he planned on charging, you know, 50, 100 bucks a month for everybody else. And his idea was, I want to build a foundation for the community so that when other people come in, it's not constantly churning, like there's a stable base. And you guys with your one-time fee already do that. Um, right. Tell me a little bit about, uh, so yours is a little bit different with the one-time fee than a lot of people are doing an ongoing fee. But tell me how you manage um, customer service. What, what are some things you'd say to somebody from a customer service perspective? 
Customer service, well, that's one of the reasons that we do the cart open and the cart close is because we have to arrange, we have a small team and we have a, a small but busy team. And so we have, we can only deal with customer service really kind of on a like, okay, this is the week where we're going to deal with customer service for Elite Blog Academy um, level, which is why cart opens, cart closes. So the bulk, I would say 98% of our customer service issues come be, during that launch week because a payment didn't go through or they got charged twice or you know what they can't log in all of that stuff happens and then it all dies down again so that, that's really how we deal with it from a customer service issue um but those are the main those are usually the main concerns and you know probably 95 percent of the issues are usually user error related to they use the wrong email address or they you know their paypal email address is different than their email address that their their regular email goes to or they use their husband's credit card or um their payment didn't go through because they are maxed out or you know like it's almost always something related to the to the user, not to the system that we're using. And I would say too, that was uh, one of the reasons why we've created that FAQ page is that the, the questions and the, the support issues that we get are always the same. It's not like, oh, all of a sudden there was like this whole new problem that we didn't know about. Um, and so we can always direct them there. Um, and for the remainder of the course, you know, the, the little bumps that people run into, we have a staff that, you know, is, well versed in the few problems that arise and they're able to answer them very quickly. But that was my goal when we set up the FAQ was to eliminate the constant need for us to pay somebody to take care of the same problems that were happening over and over and over again. And like Ruth said, 90% of them were user error. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. I like screenshots and screencasts, so <laughs> it's very yeah, easy. Her, her FAQ page is like FAQ on steroids. I mean, yeah. are, it's very detailed. <laughs> yeah, that, that pays off, though, as you don't have those questions coming up. So second to last question, um, what advice would you give to somebody with a membership site about how to design and roll out their affiliate program? Simple, again. <laughs> um, so I was kind of in charge of like taking the affiliate concept and, and putting it together. Um, and Ruth had shown me a couple of examples of things that she's used, you know, in programs that she liked that she's participated in their affiliate program. Um, and so I took those and obviously Ruth is very, you know, well aware of how to promote products and has done affiliate advertising. So I took it from somebody's standpoint myself who has never done that <laughs> and was like, okay, so if I were to promote this, what would I do? And I really just put myself in, in that position. And that's why Ruth has made it super simple. I said, look, you know, I wouldn't know where to start. I need, show me sample emails, show me, um, you know, what are the best sizes to use? I don't want to have to try to create graphics. I don't, you know, want to have to try to do anything. Um, if I'm going to promote the course, I kind of need framework. Um, so that Ruth, again, developed all the content and we made it super simple from the promotional standpoint. And then from the technical um, side of things, I know that a lot of people are overwhelmed with the links and using these links and we made it, there's only one link. So um, no matter what that link, we do the the hard part on our back end by changing out the pages to be the sales page, to be the, the opt-in page. So no matter where you are and whatever link you were using, um, it was always the same. So if I promoted Elite Blog Academy as an affiliate two years ago and that post is still up and somebody clicks on it, um, you know, today I'm going to get credit for, for those sales. So um, that was our biggest thing was making sure that we weren't going to have a ton of um, links for people to have to promote, whether it was a free training that we were doing, a, a bonus offer, or the course itself. Essentially, no matter what you were promoting, um, it would end up being funneled into your sales. So I would again. say um, from a logistical standpoint, the biggest issues that we've had with affiliates is just the sheer number of affiliates that we have. We have a lot of affiliates who have lots of questions <laughs> because they're not very advanced and they end up 
not have, like they, they have tons of questions, but then end up having zero sales. So we spend a lot of time trying to support um, affiliate affiliates, lesser affiliates when it's really like the top, you know, the top 10, 10 affiliates are like 95% of our sales. Yeah. So that part is a little hard. So I think, you know, if I were to do it over again, would I do it exactly the way that we're doing it? I don't know. Um, you know, hindsight is always twenty twenty, but in this case, it's, it's a hard, you know, we want to give people the opportunity to promote. And I love the fact that, you know, people do talk about it on their blogs and there's tons of great reviews for elite blog Academy because we've given them that opportunity um, to promote. They, they do take it. But from a, from a support standpoint, like if you have a really small team and can't handle that much support, just know that the more affiliates you have, the more questions you're going to have to deal with. If you get a few really high level affiliates, they're not the ones with any questions. They know what they're doing. They know how to navigate any sort of affiliate site. Um, they'll figure out how to promote it in the way that's best for their audience and you, you won't have to hold their hand. So th that's kind of, yeah. <laughs> the honest truth about, uh, about how it works. Like if you, if you have a small team and you want some affiliates, maybe start small and then build from there rather than starting with this huge group of affiliates who have tons of questions, but don't end up being, um, really very effective. No, oh, this has been great. Um, very, very good advice all around. So, uh, last question before we get ready to go here. If you could go back to when you first started building Elite Blog Academy, um, and I'll ask both of you this separately, and give yourself some advice, what would it be? <laughs> so, uh, um, don't start a Facebook group. <laughs> that would be one. And, um, you know, I don't know. Everything is such a learning experience that I would say that – for the most part, it's just been, it, it, the course has really grown with us and that part has been, has been, has been great. And I would probably maybe start with fewer affiliates. Um, we didn't have a lot of affiliates for the first round. Um, I just had asked a couple of, a couple of influencers, obviously, because nobody had taken the course, but it was the second round that we had lots of affiliates, lots of questions and more problems there. So I probably would have taken that a little bit slower and, um, I maybe would have, you know, started with even less content and given people an opportunity to ask more questions and um, created the content specifically to what the questions were asking. Like maybe start with the first unit and not unlock the other units um, just yet so that I could kind of build on it from there. But it worked. So, and we're still using a lot of the same content from the original and um, it's people are, you know, becoming more successful every day. So it's been a good learning experience. Oh, that's awesome. I'd echo all of that. Bree, you, you had to go in and get it done. So what would you tell yourself if you could go back? Um, I would always say less is more, except for when it comes to price. So again, <laughs> I would charge less more. and charge more as Bree's yeah. philosophy. <laughs> through um, <laughs> yeah uh, no I, I really do feel the same thing uh, it, it definitely is a very good value for the money and I'm not just saying that um, there is a ton of content and I can't imagine you find it anywhere else for less um, so I do feel one charging more would have uh, given it a higher perceived value and we might have um, attracted a different kind of client, which would have resulted in fewer questions, I think. Um, at the same time, because of our business structure and the fact that we actually have Elite Blog Academy and then the, the blog, Living Well, Spending Less, which is the primary focus, I um, argued to have Ruth less involved. So I'm the bad cop. You guys can all just like <laughs> me and she's the good cop uh, because it was very time consuming. So I you know, if it's not going to be your primary baby, I would um, ultimately encourage anybody starting a membership site to uh, be less involved, make it so that it runs itself so that you aren't, you know, having to be present for live Q and A's or office hours or, you know, uh, anything else that masterminds or Facebook, you know, responses. Right. Think of it from the standpoint of this may not always be your day job and it, probably needs to run itself. Um, but from the or, tech ask, go ahead. 
Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, or, you know, even if you're doing it the first time around uh, and being heavily involved the first time around, then finding a way to automate everything that you do the first time for the second time. So, which is what we, we have done. We've kept all the emails and everything that I was doing. I was doing so much stuff live at first and now it's more automated, but people still get the same experience because, you know, I've been able to answer the questions and it's the same questions over and over again. So from that standpoint, I think, and actually the less that I am personally involved, like, uh, like in a, on a day to day basis, that it seems like the happier, the happier people are because we've, we've found a way to anticipate the questions that they're going to ask and find a way to answer them ahead of time and then automate that process so that they always feel supported Um, but don't actually, it doesn't require me to write the same response to a question 14 times. Yeah. Awesome. So, um, you're, you've both been so generous. I really appreciate it. And Brie, I, I have nothing but admiration for, um, doing that from a bouncy trailer the whole time. (laughs) Thank you. He's pretty amazing. (laughs) So, Sorry, guys. Um, how, how can people um, get in touch with you? So, so share your URLs, and we'll put them below the video again. But share kind of you know how they can get in touch with you and learn from you, uh, you know, on your actual blogging site, and then um, about this new launch for Elite Blog Academy or Blogging Academy. Absolutely. Well, for first Elite Blog Academy, they can go to eliteblogacademy.com. Um, you can sign up, and we'll send you a free ebook and you can get on our waiting list and then we'll let you know when the doors are open on February 22nd. And if you would like to check out my day job site, um, you can go to livingwellspendingless.com. Awesome. Very cool. And and I'm assuming people who want to be affiliates for the new launch for Elite Blog Academy, they can get in touch through the same URL or is there a special URL for somebody who wants Um, to they can just contact us at um, admin at livingwellspendingless.com. Okay. I think there's a URL for it too, but that'll work. Cool. Well, thank you again so much. That was, that was fantastic. I think people are really, really going to enjoy it. So appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you guys Thanks so much. We have, we totally appreciate you guys so much. We've been so grateful for everything you've done to help us. <laughs>